Welcome to, or back to, Forgotten Hollywood, the channel where I take you back in time to show you the movies, shows, and actors that have faded over the years. Mummies have long fascinated people around the world. Ancient cultures, religions, and how they treated their dead have been a source of inspiration for screenwriters since the earliest days of Hollywood. Boris Karloff's monster classic, The Mummy, and the Brendan Fraser remake are two such examples of this craze. But their story is older than the films by a full decade. In November 1922, a stone step was uncovered in Egypt. This led to the untouched tomb of Tutankhamun and a global fascination for Egypt rivaling that of Harry Potter. And it wasn't just the gold and jewels that captured the imagination. It was the mummy's curse. Several of those who entered the tomb died in the years following and soon rumors of a curse began to spread. Naturally, Hollywood couldn't resist such a fantastic story. Unlike other monster movies of the time, such as Dracula and Frankenstein, The Mummy was based on actual events and not literature. Not to say that a mummy really came alive and went on a killing spree, but several elements of the 1932 film harken back to the discovery of the young pharaoh. On the other hand, the 1999 version, starring Brandon Fraser, had elements based on the earlier movie, and not so much history. Here's what I mean. The original movie opens to the early 1920s in Egypt. Two archaeologists are going over bits of pottery and broken tablets of hieroglyphics, with the older of the two lecturing the other on the importance of the little things over the sensational things, such as the mummy and the strange box they had also uncovered. Inside the box was a second box inscribed with a curse, that death would come to any that opened it. This led to a debate between the older archaeologist and another expert on Egypt on whether they should respect the culture and leave it closed, or open it in the name of scientific study. Before they reached a decision, the younger member of the group impulsively opens the box while the others are outside and reads from a scroll that unintentionally brings the mummy to life. As he triggered the curse, the man goes crazy and soon after dies. When you look at the 1999 version, it becomes clear where the elements of the first inspire the second. Here is two groups of experts, mercenaries, and opportunists that are seeking the city of the dead. One of the groups finds the box sealed with the curse. The other finds the mummy. An eager librarian gets her hands on the Book of the Dead and reads the spell that wakes the mummy. But she didn't open the box, so she was not subject to the curse, and only the men present when the thing was opened died, just like in the original. Another place where the two plots overlap is the mummy himself. Both were Imhotep, the high priest. Both committed acts of sacrilege and were punished severely. In the original, Imhotep fell in love with Aksunamun, daughter of the pharaoh and one of the virgin priestesses of Isis. For her love, she broke her vows, but their relationship may not have been public. After she dies of illness, Imhotep steals the Book of the Dead from the statue of Osiris, bringing upon himself the wrath of the gods in an attempt to resurrect her. He is stopped and for his heinous crime buried alive. This is essentially what happens in the remake with a few changes. The first is that Anaxunamun is not the pharaoh's daughter, but his mistress. Additionally, the two of them murder the pharaoh, apparently so they could be together, but then she kills herself, and from there it pretty much follows the same plot as the first movie. The other carryover is the theme of reincarnation, both in the case of the pharaoh's daughter, although that more comes into play in The Mummy Returns. Here we find that Evie is the reincarnation of the princess who witnessed the murder of her father and outed the killers to the pharaoh's guards. This is not mentioned in the earlier Brenda Fraser movie, which is interesting as she supposedly looks the same and Imhotep should have recognized her. Instead, the mummy just selected her to be the vessel for Anaxunamun's spirit so they could be together again. Maybe the original intent was to have it like the 1932 version? In that one, the heroine Helen was Imhotep's love in her past life and feels a connection to him, but she also loves a man from her own time much like the remake with Rick and Evie. To help them be together, Imhotep restores her memories of, from their shared history, only this kind of backfires on him as she also remembers the rules and doesn't want to anger the gods again. Both movies are heavily influenced by the culture and beliefs of ancient Egyptians, though it is interesting to compare each film's take on it. For example, in the original, Imhotep's name and job were carved into the inside of the sarcophagus, but in the remake, they were left out entirely. 
Both these plot points were used for the sake of the story. The first time, the name and job were provided for background on who he was while still maintaining the mystery of why he was buried alive. The second left it off as a way to build tension for the characters. Evie, having studied Egyptology, knew that names were put on sarcophaguses so the soul could find the body again. So, leaving the name off was a curse unto itself. Also, as the film opened with a prologue, exposition was not needed at this point. The original also had the added bit about Helen regaining her memories of Anaxuna Moon without fully losing herself. This created conflict and doubt for the character, calling her to cry out to the gods for forgiveness and to save her from Imhotep. I'm not sure I would call either film realistic, but the original was more true to the beliefs of actual ancient Egyptians. For more details, including what they got wrong in mythology, please check out my video from it on the most recent of the Mummy franchise, link in the description. Whether you prefer the classic look of Boris Karloff or the wit and banter of Brendan Fraser, The Mummy is a timeless adventure that never goes out of style. Each version has something to bring to the table, and both play on the fascination of ancient times, superstition, and the idea that death is only the beginning. Thanks for watching. Which version of The Mummy do you prefer? Are you a classicist? Or are Rick and Evie your power couple? Let me know in the comments, and don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy this sort of content. Also, click that bell to receive notifications. Let me know if there is another set of movies you would like a deeper look at, and I will catch up with you next time.